everybody, it's Claire. Welcome back to another Web Dev Wednesday. Today we are continuing with our JavaScript exploration here. And in last week's video, we built this simple little toggle button here that changes the color of this box. We are going to revisit this and make it a little bit more complicated, give us a few more options, and then demonstrate a way besides if like endless if else statements to evaluate what's going on and change it accordingly. So to start with, we're just going to adjust our if else here to add more color changes, basically. So in our index, um, we have the style now up here in the head just because we didn't have very many. And then the page is just a button that when you click it, it runs the change color function and a div um, with the idea of change me that starts out as red in our JavaScript. We evaluate if the background's red, change it to blue or else change it to red. We're going to add a second if statement down here. So you can do if else, but you can do a bunch of else ifs in a row. So if it's red, change it to blue. Let's do if box style background equals blue. Let's change it to green. Else if our box style background equals green, let's change it to black. And finally, if our box style background is equal to black, we're going to set it back to red. Okay, if we save this, refresh it, the page in our browser. If it's red, it turns to blue. If it's blue, it turns to green. If it's green, it turns to black. And if it's black, it should turn back to red. Ooh. If I put the quotes around the proper thing. Okay, so red to blue, blue to green, green to black, black to red. It's a full cycle here. But this is a lot of ifs and else's and ifs, and it can get kind of confusing. And if you want to nest them, it gets even more complicated. So I'm going to show you a little hack here to get rid of all our if else's and use something called a switch statement. So our switch statement is here. Um, instead of doing an if else, if do this, we just put switch. Here is the expression you want to evaluate. So in our case, we're going to put our box style background right here. And then within our curly brackets, we have a list of cases and code to execute if this expression evaluates to this case. So I only have one case here, but in a switch statement, you'd have as many as you needed. And it's just a way to sort of streamline your code. And I think it's a lot more intuitive. It makes more sense. So um, this would be our if this equals whatever our case is, colon, do this, what we would normally put in our curly brackets then we break. So if this is true, it'll end the code. But if not, it keeps going and we can have another case and another thing to execute and so on. So let's get into our code here and let's make a switch statement to do what we just did with a bunch of annoying if else if else ifs. So we start with switch and our curly braces. So what we are testing is our box variable, which remember we set to that div style background. So we're text testing the background style of our box. And here we have a bunch of cases. So if it's the red case, then we change the box style background to blue. And then we have to break it because otherwise it'll keep evaluating and it'll we don't want that. So between each case, just make sure you break the code so it knows if this is true, stop. Now let's do case blue. If it's blue, change it to green, break. If it's green, colon, set it to black, break. And if it's black, set it back to red. And if it's the last uh, case in the block, you don't need to put break because the block ends anyway. So if we save this and refresh, it should behave exactly in the same way. Because instead of using a bunch of 
if, else if, else if. We just did one switch statement with all the cases that we will have in here. So we click it, it's red, so it should evaluate box style background and go right to this red case. And it does, it changes it to blue. Now if we click it again, it's gonna run the same switch statement. It's gonna evaluate to blue and change it to green. And so on, it works the exact same way. There's another part of um, switch statements that you can do um, called default. So we will need to break this if we're putting a default in because it's not the last, um, the last case in our switch statement. So the default um, is what runs if none of the cases that you have specified are true. So I guess what we would do is just do box inner HTML equals what color? Since we kind of coded this to be nice and straightforward, that shouldn't affect us. But say we have this like purple or something. So it's purple, but if we click the button, it gives us the what color because in our switch statement, we don't have a case for what to do if it evaluates to purple. All right, guys, that's a real quick overview of the switch statement when you are um, using JavaScript functions. So I hope you found this helpful. Uh, this is intended just to familiarize with the syntax of the switch statement and sort of a demonstration of how simple it can make our code and prevent a bunch of nested else ifs that are not that human friendly when you are reading the code. Anyway, thanks again for watching you guys. Remember, I post new videos every Wednesday, so I will see you next week. Bye, you guys.